Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you my new Carbon Arc Torch, which I made at the suggestion of a few of my subscribers that left me comments on my last few videos. A number of people suggested that I use a Carbon Arc Torch to aid in the generation of synthetic rubies, so I looked into these. I had never heard of a Carbon Arc Torch before. Apparently these were invented in the late 1800s. I was especially interested in making one of these torches because apparently they are a good substitute for an oxyacetylene torch, which I've never had in my workshop. This torch can reach the same or maybe even a hotter temperature than an oxyacetylene torch without needing expendable fuel sources. This runs right off my arc welder, which of course runs off my wall outlet. If I really wanted to, I could buy solar panels and batteries and power this torch purely from sunlight, which is an intriguing thought. This torch uses carbon rods with the measurement of 5 sixteenths of an inch by 12 inches. So they're a foot long and 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And I bought a 50 pack of these carbon rods on eBay for like $20. So they're less than 50 cents a piece and they actually last quite a long time. I don't think I'll ever have to buy carbon rods again. These rods are mounted in metal clamps, which are on an articulated handle so that I can bring the two rods together and strike an arc between them. The handle itself is made of wood so that the two articulated pieces are electrically insulated from one another. To each section of the wood handle I've attached a metal rail to extend the end of the torch further away from your hands, and at the end of each rail a clamp to hold the carbon electrodes. These clamps were about $3 each, and the steel rail was also only $3, sold as a mounting bracket for shelves. The clamps attach to the rail with bolts, and then each one is screwed into the handle at the base. I've articulated the two halves of this handle with a small hinge, so as I push the handle apart with my thumb, it brings the tip of the carbon rods close to each other. I've wrapped several rubber bands around the front of this handle to give this action some resistance, and also to keep the carbon rods apart when I set the torch down to go turn the welder on and off. If you were to build one of these for yourself, the most expensive part is definitely going to be the cable. A cable this size that can handle the power from an arc welder could be five or six dollars per foot, and I'm using about 12 feet for this torch. If you can ask around and find someone with a cable like this that's collecting dust, you'll save quite a lot of money on this project. Two wires from this cable are split at the torch head and connected to each of the rails that hold the carbon electrodes. On the opposite end from the torch, two pieces of copper act as terminals bolted to a wooden block. This just allows me to connect the power supply from the welder to this cable in a secure way. The most important thing to be careful of is making sure there are no metal pieces that could make an electrical connection between the two metal rails. For example, the screws that hold the rails to the wooden handles could touch each other in the middle if you're not careful. So I filed their points off and put a piece of rubber between them. And that's really all there is to it. This whole design is really just a clever way to touch these two carbon rods together and keep a spark going between them. So with this torch completed, let's see what it can do. This works great for heating both conductive and non-conductive materials, and I've also seen it work for brazing. An obvious disadvantage with this compared to an oxyacetylene torch is that you can't adjust the flame to be either oxygen or fuel rich. It just is what it is, superheated air. This can cause corrosion in certain materials like steel, but if you wanted to get fancy, you could add a line to blow a shielding gas into the arc, the same as with a MIG or TIG welder. All right, so that is it for this project. This was a really simple build, but I think this is a tool that I will find really useful around my workshop. As you can see, I already have a setup here to film a follow-up video with this torch that I think you'll be really interested in. We're going to be generating a flammable gas using an arc torch in a process that I don't think you'll have seen. So stay tuned for that video. I also want to mention that uh, in the current crisis that's going on in the world right now, 
Keep in mind um, the people in, around the world that have already been struggling, especially places where hunger is an issue and families are being forced to decide whether they go to work to uh, feed their kids or stay home to protect their elderly. Um, there are a lot of people around the world in that dilemma right now. So keep in mind, if you have some extra income, try to support some organizations that are working to feed families around the world that don't have any other choice but to go to work if they don't want their kids to starve. I'll put some links in the video description below uh, so you can uh, support some organizations that I have uh, enjoyed supporting over the years. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you on the next one. I'll have some more interesting projects in the future. Leave me comments below. I'd love to hear from you, especially if you have ideas for future projects. Obviously, this project was inspired by some of your comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.